shaking so fitting for this time that we're in well welcome i'm david edwards interim pastor at hoskins avenue baptist church it's good to see you today to have you join me today um, i will continue today in a series of sermons that i started a few weeks back and so let's jump right in if you've got your bible with you, go ahead and turn with me to Psalm 1, verse 3. The book of Psalm, verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 3. I'm reading from the New King James Version, and it reads He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today, for this is the day that you have made, and we shall we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, God, that you've wakened us, Lord, that we may uh, worship you in um, spirit and in truth, God, that we may sing songs up to you, unto you, Lord, give praise unto you, and bring glory unto your name. Have your way today, Father, that, that lives will be changed and souls will be saved. This is the hour now. Speak through me that you will be heard, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 As I mentioned several weeks ago, I began a new series of sermons titled, When Things Are Shaking. I won't take uh, uh, too much time today to summarize them uh, each, but I will give you their title and tell you where you can find them. And so the first of the messages that I brought to you, uh, the first message was titled, When Things Are Shaking, Everything I'll stake everything on that which shall remain. Stake everything on that which shall remain. The second message in the series uh, is titled, When Things Are Shaking, Continue in the Custom. When Things Are Shaking, Continue in the Custom. The third message that I brought you last week it's titled, When Things Are Shaking, Discern Who Is Speaking. You must know who's speaking this day and time. You must be able to discern the voice of God. Amen. When you get a, a moment, visit our website at hoskinsabc.com. And once there, you, you will be able to view each of these messages right there uh, by a link there on the web page at Hoskins. HoskinsABC.com. We are in a season when things are continuing to shake. Uh, as I have said over and over, things are shaking. In December of 2019, the media began reporting on a little known virus by the name of coronavirus. It was in the month of January in 2020 that in this nation, we began to hear it uh, more prevalent, began to hear more reportings on it. Um, uh, the coronavirus had spread to this country 
And by the month of March in 2020, um, in this nation, it turned things upside down when it became a pandemic known by the name of COVID-19, coronavirus. COVID-19 had become a real thing to us here in this country. At the time, infections uh, were in the thousands and, and it had taken the life of hundreds of people. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, hundreds or one, any life taken is one too many. And so uh, uh, today, here we are a year later, and the pandemic, COVID-19, is still a thing. It's much bigger, much larger. In fact, it has infected over 103 million people worldwide uh, and caused some 2.2 million deaths. Terrible. But, but, but it has turned this world upside down. Um, COVID-19 alone has turned things upside down, not only for this nation, but for the entire world. Things are still shaking. Hebrews 12, 26 says, God's voice shook the earth and things are still shaking, shaking. Today, I want to take just a few moments and tell you that, that when things are shaking, you won't be moved if you are planted and rooted in in Jesus Christ. That's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about trees uh, that, that are planted uh, and rooted in Jesus Christ. This nation, as, as we once knew it, uh, is, is, is no more because of the shaking that is taking place. In fact, the earth is still rocking and reeling, shaking. Uh, things have been interrupted and turned upside down. Worldwide industries uh, are, are shaking. Global markets are shaking. And international institutions that once thought to be on solid foundations are being toppled over and, and, and crumbling uh, as this world ha uh, it has been turned upside down. Listen, Calamity has set in, and 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 people are are confused. Uh, don't know which way to turn, uh, where to go, but they're looking for answers, and 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 that's why uh, today I wanted to come and, and tell you that when things are shaking, you won't be moved. Amen. And there's a big if that comes after that. I, I can recall the scripture and the story of of King. Hezekiah. In fact, 2 Kings chapter 21 says that Hezekiah, who was the 13th king of Judah, uh, was known as the righteous king. After his death, uh, his son Mas uh, Manasseh became king at the age of 12, and he reigned for 55 years. During his reign, he, he caused all, kind of, uh, all kinds of uh, calamity and and he brought he he brought sin back into uh, into the nation in fact he did evil in the sight of the Lord is what the scripture says it goes on to say that he rebuilt the high places that Hezekiah had his father the righteous king had had destroyed and demolished in his day why because of the evilness but 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 Manasseh rebuilt those high places. He even erected uh, altars to the lesser known God by the name of Baal. And, and he made a wooden image to Baal, uh, the same as Ahab, king of Israel, had done in his day. And guess what? He, he even went on to worship it. And it says he worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served them. He even built altars inside the house of the Lord, uh, the very house which the Lord said, in Jerusalem, I will put my name in the house of Jerusalem. Uh, he, he made his son pass through the fire. Yes, that's right. Uh, uh, Manasseh took his own child 
through practices of uh, uh, safe soothsaying and, and he used witchcraft and he consulted spiritists and mediums. Hezekiah did so much evil in the sight of the Lord that it provoked God to anger. The same thing is happening today. God has been pro pro provoked to anger and, and the world is rocking and reeling and shaking because, because yet once again, God has spoken and the earth is shaking. Listen to what the Lord's response was to the evilness that Manasseh did. Second Kings chapter 21 verses 20 uh, verses 12 through 13 says this. Therefore, thus says the Lord, God of Israel, behold, I am bringing such calamity upon Jerusalem and Judah that whoever hears it, but his ears will tingle. 13 says this, and I will stretch over Jerusalem the measuring line of Samaria and the plummet of the house of Ahab. And I will wipe Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it, turning it upside down. Today uh, in, in this world, it is shaking. Uh, things are being moved and toppled over, breaking and, and falling away from the Lord as this world is being turned upside down. Can I demonstrate something to you? I want you to get the imagery uh, and put a picture in your mind um, for, for, for the effects. Why? Because I need you to understand what's happening in this world today. Here, let me, let me dem illustrate and demonstrate something to you. I've got a plate here. Um, uh, this plate represents the world. And I've got a few items, a few objects on the plate. Uh, as you can, you, you may be able to see these here. I've got a bottle of eye drops. I've got some Trident gum. I've got some uh, hand sanitizer. These represent buildings, uh, industries, institutions, markets that have been impacted by the shaking of this world. Uh, the, the, the word says, uh, the word says, I will wipe Jerusalem as one wipes a dish. I've got my plate here. I've got my dish towel here symbolizing uh, uh, God wiping Jerusalem just as he, he is, is, uh, is impacting this world today. Notice that as I began to wipe, things began to topple over. And, and the scripture says, He's wiping, and he wipes as, as if one is, is wiping a dish, turning it upside down. And as I turn it upside down, things begin to fall away from this plate, symbolizing the earth. Things begin to fall away, those things not made by God, but yet made by hand. He says specifically, I will wipe Jerusalem as one wipes a dish wiping it, turning it upside down. Notice that when I wiped that plate, uh, what happened? Things fell over, toppled, uh, uh, symbolizing industries toppling, symbolizing markets crashing, symbolizing institutions being brought down that once uh, we thought were built on solid foundations, coming down, crumbling, crushing, uh, uh, and being turned upside down. This is what is happening today. Things are falling away from the Lord. People are falling away from the Lord. This is what's happening. But Hebrews 12, 26 says that God's voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Don't miss this. He has promised yet once again, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, <coughs> excuse me, this phrase, not once, uh, not yet once more indicates the removal of things that are shaking, things that, that have been made by man's hands. They shall not stand, 
they cannot withstand the shaking that is happening. You and I know that that there is much that, that there is much shaking going on, but little that you can do. Little that I can do. We cannot prevent this shaking. God has set it in motion, and we cannot prevent things that have been made to stop being moved around. We can't stop the toppling. We can't stop the crumbling. We can't stop the confusion or the calamity that's taking place. No, no, God is speaking and we cannot stop him. But as individuals, you and I, there is something that we can do that, 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 that we won't be moved. Amen. When things are shaking, know that you won't be moved. Recently, let me tell you this story here. Recently, I was in a conversation with my Uncle Tommy, and uh, we, we were talking about where he lives. The, the, uh, it's a very busy thoroughfare, a very busy highway road right out in front of his home. He lives on the corner just as you turn into the subdivision of uh, where he lives. And, and he recalled during this conversation the many wrecks that have taken place over the years right there in front of his home. But not one vehicle has ever hit his house. Why? It's because his home is shielded, surrounded by trees. That's right. Shielded and surrounded by trees. Healthy trees. Trees that are planted and, and rooted deeply rooted that they don't fall down. David said it this way in Psalm 1 verse 3. He says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. When things are shaking, uh, you won't be moved. If, recall I said that's a big if, if you are planted and rooted in Jesus Christ. What am I trying to say here? Well, what I'm trying to say is when trees are hit, when, when, when trees are, 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 takes a huge, a huge punt, they absorb the impact. Uh, 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 while, while, while little to no sign of being infected or affected by the hit itself, by the punch itself. When trees are, are, are served a big blow, they, they bend and they may even sway, but they don't break. Hallelujah. Their footing doesn't move. Uh, why? Because, because they are deeply rooted. And, and grounded in the richness of the earth. Well, well, man is the same way when man is uh, like a tree planted in the word of God. That is, uh, that is, has learned and studied the word of God uh, uh, and his faith is rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. He, he will not be moved no matter what comes his way, no matter, no matter what punch he receives. No, he absorbs that punch, and and it has very little to no effect on him. In fact, in fact, it says no matter what happens, he will not be moved. Amen. I don't know if you recall the story of Jesus and his disciples as they were passing by a bush along the road. Jesus was hungry and went to the bush for uh, uh, figs. But there was no fruit on the bush. Jesus cursed that bush and, and, and they moved on. And on their way back, the disciples saw the bush and recall and remember that Jesus had cursed the bush. That bush had dried up. That, that bush had withered and, and died. Be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. That you not that you not dry up and die. Well, in case you're wondering, well, well, what can you do then? Uh, I, I, I want to give you three things, uh, and I'm, I'm going to take my seat here. I want to give you three things that you can do. Be like a tree 
so that you won't be moved. While, while things are shaking, you may feel that impact, but it won't overcome you. While things, are, while things are hitting you left and right, you will feel the pain. In fact, in fact, you will feel the sting, but it will not be lasting. You may feel it, but it will soon go away. Listen, it may hurt you, but it won't harm you. Uh, 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 th there will be a la no lasting effect to you. Uh, the things that sting you, the things that, that hurt you, they hit you and you absorb them. And guess what? You keep right on going. You take the licking and you keep on ticking. Amen. It will, you will not be affected long term by what hits you, by what, uh, by the cala uh, calamity that comes toward you, by the adversity that comes toward you. Why? Because you will be deeply planted and deeply rooted in the word of God. Amen. Here's the, the second thing I want to leave with you. Be like a tree so that you continue producing fruit. Now, now look at that, look at that verse there in Psalm 1 3. It says, it says, He, man, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Why? So that uh that that it brings fruit in its season that it brings fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. Now that second thing, be like a tree that you continue producing fruit. I like, I like what John 15, 8 says. He says, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Are you disciples of the Lord Jesus today? Are you bearing much fruit today? Uh, listen, if you are not bearing fruit, then, then then there is no use for you in the kingdom here on earth. When Jesus and his disciples uh, passed by, they remembered Jesus had cursed that bush and they saw that it was withered up and died. Uh, unless you are producing fruit today, your life will dry up and you will die. Amen. Amen. You want to produce fruit. I, I mentioned last week, take the fruit test. I, I don't know how many of you got by yourself and took the fruit test, but you take that fruit test. If that fruit test uh, uh, reveals that, listen, your fruit is positive, your, your fruit is sweet, uh, uh, then you are producing good fruit that glorifies the Lord. It, 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 on the other hand, you realize your, your fruit is negative, your fruit is sad, your fruit is soured, then you are dishonoring the Lord with your fruit. And in other words, it won't be long before you dry up, wither up, and die. Amen. If you are not producing fruit, it stands to reason then that you are not planted in the word of God. You are not healthy in your belief system. You, you are not producing kingdom fruit. You Listen, be careful that you don't become like uh, the bush withered up, dried up, and die. Ultimately, death becomes uh, your, your faith because you are not producing fruit. Amen. Here's the third thing I want to leave with you. It says, it says, be like a tree so that you prosper. Go back to that verse, Psalm 1, 3. It says, he, man shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. Here's the other thing. And whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. Uh, 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 Second Chronicles 20, 20 says, so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Israel, uh, of Jerusalem, 
believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Have faith in the Lord so that you continue to prosper. Amen. So that you continue to prosper. Listen, I'll say it again. Uh, listen, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Uh, 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 believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Have faith in the Lord God and, and so that you continue to prosper. I, I don't know about you, but when you are planted, uh, uh, me, I'm planted in the word of God and, and my faith is deeply rooted in his, wor in his word. Why? So that I, while I am being hit, while I am being uh, 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 hit upon and blows coming left and right on each and every side, I, I, I am bending I might be wavering a little, but I am not breaking. I am not falling down. I am standing on the word of God, standing because the word is true, standing on spirit of the word. Amen. That Listen, I'm not toppling over. I am not uh, lost in confusion and calamity. It goes right by me. I pay no attention because my faith is in the Lord. Amen. Deeply rooted in his word, uh, amen. And you you wanna get to the same place in the word of God, planted in the word of God. I close with this. See that, uh, see to it that, that, that you are not moved during this time of shaking. And while things are being toppled, uh, things are, are falling over, being turned upside down, See that you are not crumbling under uh, pressure. Uh, be like a tree planting yourself uh, in the word of God so that you remain fruitful and make sure your faith is deeply rooted, rooted in, in Christ Jesus so that you will not be moved. Amen. Uh, when things are shaking, you won't be moved. I hope this word has, has been a word of encouragement to you, has inspired you to get into the word of God, uh, 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 increase your faith in the Lord. Why? So that you are not moved during this time that we're in. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me uh, ask if you are not saved, if you will, repeat these words after me. They're real simple words. It is not just the mere words themselves, but is the act and as well as what you believe, amen, that can save your life. If you will, just repeat after me. Father, that's right. Father, I am a sinner. I have sinned and I cannot save myself. Jesus, I believe that you died, was buried, rose on the third day, and now sit at the right hand of God the Father. I in invite you to come into my heart, Jesus, and save me. Amen. Listen, simple words and the belief in Jesus Christ and you are saved. If you said those words, do me a favor, go out to Hoskins ABC dot com and reach out and let me know that you gave your life to Christ today. I want to celebrate you. The word says angels in heaven celebrates for every soul that comes to the Lord, comes to God. And so with the angels, we want to celebrate with you. Will you do that today? Will you reach out? Let us know that you that you invited Christ into your heart today and that you are now saved. Amen. I want to reach back to you and celebrate with you. Thank you for doing that. Amen. And so right now we're going to pray and I'll announce the benediction. Amen. Father, thank you now for this day. Thank you, God, that while your word has gone forth, we know that it doesn't return to you void. Thank you for the souls, God, that have been impacted today. Lives that have been changed, Lord. Shackles removed and 
bond, bondage, God, broken and chains uh, released, God. Thank you for salvation today. Lord, we proclaim it now, Lord, that souls have been saved in the name of Jesus. Thank you now that you had your way, Lord. Continue to work in us and through us throughout this week that, that listen, our actions, our fruit will bring glory unto you that you, God, will receive and be uh, celebrated, be exalted, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining here today. And uh, may what has been uh, shared with you today bring encouragement to your heart, inspire you to get uh, into the word of God, be planted in his word, and that your faith grows, that it is, that it is deeply rooted in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let me pronounce the benediction. Lord, your word says this. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before our Lord and to present us in his glory with exceeding joy to the, uh, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, both dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining today. Thank you for giving me your time. I tried not to be long. Um, be encouraged during this time of shaking and moving here on this earth. Be encouraged. Stand planted in the word of God. Amen. That your fruit will be sweet, that it will remain, that you not wither up and die. Allow God to use you, that he will be glorified. Thank you so much. You guys go, go and have a blessed week. I'll see you back here this time next week. Have a great day.